I read a New York Times piece on a hundred-year-old survivor of the Tulsa massacre. And my question was this. What's the Tulsa massacre? How is it that it wasn't until two years ago that I heard about the Tulsa massacre? How is that possible? I've heard about Custer's uh, ma uh, the Little Bighorn. I heard about the Alamo. Uh, you know, I heard about the uh, Triangle Shirtwaist fire. You know, I heard about all kinds of disasters in which people died. But I had never heard about this thing that happened in 1921, only three years before my dad was born. One of the most successful black communities in America, Black Wall Street, in which everybody was not only burned out of their homes and their businesses, but then driven out of the city limits by an angry mob of, I'm sorry, white people. How is it that this was not taught to me? Because I tell you, at the age of 10, when I was in fifth grade, living in Oakland, California, that would have been a moment of enlightenment for me. And it made me mad. It made me mad that somebody had somehow made an editorial process of what was appropriate for us to learn about our own American history. It made me angry. And uh, it, took, it took me 64, it took me 54 years in order to find this out. It's not right. It's not right and it's doing a disservice to all of America. World-renowned movie star, I'm sure he's an Academy Award winner, but he was ignorant about the whole uh, Tulsa massacre. And so that is very telling of the American education system, especially when it comes to history. One of the things that people would say is, well, if you got a good grades in American history, you're knowledgeable. They're only knowledgeable based upon what they taught you. And there's so much history that's not taught, so much history that's omitted. And people of all ethnicities are discovering this and they're not happy about it. And that's one of the reasons why we travel and we have travel experiences because you learn things that you will not learn in any particular educational system, especially if it's been heavily influenced by the West, which many countries in Africa, their dominant educational systems have been influenced by the West. You look at the curriculums, you look at what they teach, you look at their systems, heavily influenced by the West, funded by the West, you'll see a lot of Western influence in these curriculums. And it's unfortunate because you be, I talk to people in their 70s and 80s, and they'll say, I never knew this. But they've been through the school, they have master's degrees, doctor degrees, traveled the world, and the seven seas. Uh, and still didn't know some of the fundamental aspects or uh, fundamental pieces of the puzzle about their existence in America. It's very interesting. And I'm talking about whether it's American history, black history as they would call it, or global African diaspora history, or just history in general, there's so much omitted. So much omitted, I talk about the French and what the French have done over the years, Belgium and what Belgium did in Africa, the Spanish and what the Spanish did and how brutal they were. But yet the first places we wanna go, Spain, Portugal, France, London, uh, uh, but Brussels, but we don't understand the history behind that and much of what funded it. So a lot of things we complain about are the very institutions that fund the oppression that we complain about. So that, that's what you begin to learn as you start searching. And what I'm hoping for that, that more and more people on different platforms will start talking about the history, even though people think that it's old news and it happened in the past, there is a residual effect that's happening today. There are people who are benefiting and still profiting from much of the human terrorism that's occurred over the years. They're still profiting. These banks, you'd be amazed, they change names, but the profits are still coming in off of the labor of those that they exploited and stole and steal from. When, when people come to Africa and they turn their nose up and they're like, I don't understand why they don't have this and why they don't have that. Uh, oftentimes we're the ones who benefit from what has been and is being stolen from this continent. You know, so it's a lot to it, and what I hope that we would do is be deeper and a bit more introspective and a bit more inquisitive when it comes to our collective histories, and this is of anyone of any ethnicity, because the more we know, the more we can personally correct certain things, but then we can also, from a collective standpoint, change these narratives and start telling the truth, and it's going to call out and expose a lot of people 
but at least that way there's the ability to bring some sort of reconciliation or some, make some sort of sense of it all, if you feel what I'm saying. So anyway, that's my two cents today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. That's the deal right here on Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron. Talk to you soon. Open up your eyes and see all the fun and mystery. Take an African adventure with Dan and Destiny. From the mountains to the shore, so many things to explore. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on our children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa, and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.